We are live. Uh, well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for stopping your scroll. You are just in time for our Facebook Live Q&A series. It's the Working for Business series. And I have the privilege, and first of all, hang on, let me introduce myself. Uh, we haven't had the privilege of meeting. Um, Lindsay Kiesler, President and CEO of the Chamber of Catawba County. Uh, such a privilege every month to come on here and interview great businesses uh, and even greater and more incredible leaders behind these businesses to shine a light on their successes and shine a light on the fact that they enhance our community and the lives of those who, who live here. So again, if you're just hopping on live, welcome. Uh, just so I know you're here, say hello please say hello to me so I know that I'm not here alone in social media world, um, but I'm truly not alone. You're gonna to get to meet our special guests here shortly and also a word from our sponsor. But I just wanna say thank you for, for being here. Thank you for being interested and in learning more about local businesses and, and again, the leaders that are behind them. Uh, this is called the Working for Business Series. That's the core of what we do at the Chamber. Uh, that is actually our tagline. So working for businesses is, is the central focus, ensuring that we lighten the burdens and tackle the most critical issues impacting business in Catawba County, but also across the region. So thank you for being here. So uh, you're gonna get to meet my special guests here shortly. Uh, hint, hint, their logos are uh, right beside me. But first, I want to recognize our presenting sponsor, our series sponsor, Hickory Real Estate Group. Hickory Real Estate Group has been so generous to make this possible so that we can come on to Facebook and bring forth these special guests for you to learn from them. And today, I am uh, honored to be joined by Ryan Putnam. Ryan is a realtor with Hickory Real Estate Group. And Ryan is actually here, and he's going to say, a couple words. Welcome, Ryan. Hello, my name is Ryan Putnam. I'm a realtor with Hickory Real Estate Group. We are a proud sponsor of the Chamber of Catawba County. I know that the market has been a hot topic here lately, but I am confident that I or one of our 30 plus agents with Hickory Real Estate Group can help you through any purchase or sale in the real estate market. Uh, so if you're in the market to purchase or sell, check out our Facebook page at Hickory Real Estate Group or our website at hickoryrealestategroup.com. Or if you'd like to reach me directly, you can call 828-545-6164. And again, that's Ryan Putnam with Hickory Real Estate Group, and I hope you folks have a good evening. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for being on here again. Thank you to Hickory Real Estate Group and their 30 real estate agents. That's incredible. The company has grown so much over the last, I believe, 11 years that they've been um, in this market. So to Mike and Kathleen Kelly and all your whole team, I want to say thank you for being our series sponsor. And Ryan, thanks for stopping in. So uh, without further ado, actually, first, I have to ask you if you would engage with us. So this is a live interview. You can drop a comment. If you can react, use that like button or the heart button or the wow face if you like what is uh, is said today uh, also you can drop a question so if you want to ask a question of my special guest go ahead and include that because I have the ability to uh, see those questions and hopefully we can weave it into our conversation uh, if you, you've had a good experience with Cranford Hospitality and any of their businesses I'd love for you to brag on them and leave them some love in the comments. What means the most to us is when you share the video. So if you click the share button or click a watch party button, more of your friends can hear from my special guest that I have with me today. So thank you in advance for stopping in. Thank you for your engagement. Thank you for sharing the video. Uh, and also, by the way, if you're watching the replay, thanks for stopping in and, and for, for listening after the fact. So uh, I am so proud to be joined with a brother duo that's really um, quite, quite, they're quite serial entrepreneurs uh, and just impressive young professionals all around. Uh, Tucker Cranford 
And also Zach Cranford with Cran Cranford Hospitality are joining me today. Hey guys, thanks so much for being on here. Thank you for having us. We're yeah. glad to be on here. Thanks, we appreciate it. Thanks guys. Well, if you've never had the privilege of meeting these this two uh, brother brother duo, uh, as I mentioned, they are brothers, but they're also founders and partners of several businesses that fall under the Cranford Hospitality umbrella. And you're going to learn more about those businesses. You might even recognize one that they're sitting in uh, today. They're both young professionals, highly motivated, local serial entrepreneurs and restaurateurs. They have a passion for creating sustainable food and beverage ventures that create lasting value for our community and also the local economy. Zach also, just to, to share about him, he serves on our board of directors for the chamber. So he really and truly believes in the mission impact of what we do day in and day out. I've had the privilege of learning from him um, over the last couple of years. Uh, so Zach, thank you for your leadership on our board um, and thanks for joining me today. Thank you. All right, you guys, so uh, our, a popular or a, really a listener favorite. If you've tuned in over the past year and a half plus that we've been doing these interviews, we like to throw in what we call a rapid fire Q&A. So it's getting to know these two guys in uh, five minutes or less. So you got you, you guys ready for this? Okay, all right. So Zach, I'm gonna start with you. Zach, what was your very first job? So believe it or not, before we uh, my family shifted to hospitality, we were in um, manufacturing and I would get off from school and uh, dad would have a, a bill laden and I'd have to load a box of uh, box of socks and, uh, and, and load up that truck uh, to get everything going. I was paid in snacks and sodas because I was just in elementary school, but I guess that was my first taste of, of work. <laughs> yes, and always working in the family business. I love, I love that story. All right, Tucker, what's your favorite place you've ever visited? Uh, Seattle, Washington. Uh, my wife and I went for our first anniversary a couple years back, and uh, it was just a beautiful city. And I'm a Seahawks fan, so that helped as well, and we got to go to a game. Nice, nice. Zach, what's your favorite family tradition? Yeah, so this one's really special for me. Um, we do a free community breakfast at Granny's Kitchen in Eichard. That's our original location. That's where me and Tucker grew up, and we do that every Christmas morning. We didn't get to do it last year because of COVID and uh, the timing of it, but I think we were going on our 12th year of it, and we, we feed about 1,000 uh, hot meals that morning, wow. and we have over 70 to 80 volunteers. Many are family, but also many are just members of the community um, that just want to be a part of something special on Christmas morning, and that's something uh, we really enjoy doing. Oh, that's that's so, so neat. Um, Tucker, what strengths do you think that Zach brings to the business? Uh, I would say Zach's a great leader. Um, he speaks well, um, and uh, he, he don't only um, take care of what we have and, and uh, strive to be good at what we currently do, but what, what we plan to do in the future. Love that. Zach, what about, what about Tucker? What, what strengths does he bring to the business? Yeah, so Tucker is sound, uh, determined, and um, focused on the day to day. So, like, as f I would say he's an operations guru. So, if there's something in the kitchen or something in front of house, whatever, if a process isn't working, he can handle that process and take it on for us. And, uh, you know, I think he does that with a sense of calmness um, mm -hmm. and not necessarily urgency, um, which I think is good in a leader. Yeah, that's, that's great. You guys balance each other really well. All right, Tucker, what uh, motivates you? What's your greatest motivator? Uh, I would say my wife and uh, my baby girl. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. All right, Zach, if you were famous for something, you are famous for fill in the blank. I would say I'm still working on uh, being famous. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I'm famous for anything yet, but uh, that's to be determined. And uh, I would say Tucker as well, uh, that previous question, his uh, baby girl, he just had a, how old is she? 
Uh, two and a half months. Two and a half months. The newest member of our family, and we just love her. <laughs> oh, love that. So you're famous at being an uncle. Is that what you're trying to say, Zach? I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm still, that's, it's out there. I'm a, I'm a pester by nature. So um, we enjoy having her. I'm, I, and uh, I'm not sure if she enjoys my company yet, but she will when she gets to, able to play around and all that good stuff. So you'll be the Funkel, right? The Funkel, the fun <laughs> uncle. That is I, I, I like it. I like it. And maybe she'll be, uh, when when she gets older, she'll be bussing, bussing tables and doing all the fun things like you guys had to do growing up. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully she'll start soon. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> you need some extra hands. Yeah. You need some extra hands, especially now in the whole workforce issues. All right. So, um, Tucker, if you could spend 30 minutes with any leader, whether it be present day or a historical leader, who would that be? Um, as I said before, I'm a Seahawks fan, so probably Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Uh, he's just got uh, passion and drive uh, like nobody. Um, just the way he speaks, he speaks very well. He's always so positive. And uh, I just feel like he's got good energy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right. That would be a fun, fun dinner conversation. Zach, what's the best advice you've ever received? Um, so I would say this is probably from a college professor. Uh, his name was uh, Lewis Sheets down at uh, State. And uh, he said, people invest in people. Mm. And, uh, you know, starting out as a founder, you know, it was more of they're investing in us. And, you know, we're the ones that have to make it you know, bring it to life. But that has since changed since we're growing. We're, the, we're on the opposite side of that spectrum. And um, you can have a great product, but you got to have great people, more importantly, to execute that product. Um, so I think that's one of the best um, advices I've had in all walks of life. Oh, that's great. Tucker, I, I may know the answer to this question now that we talked about your baby girl, but when, when you're not at work, where can we find you? Uh, definitely spending time with my family. Uh, but actually a lot of times we end up having dinner at one of our places or we, uh, we also like to try new places and, and venture out, um, for, for future ideas. And then I really enjoy playing, playing golf as well. So you might find me on the golf course. Nice. I like that. And isn't that special? Um, and I'm sure a lot of the, your greatest motivators in, in hospitality is creating that experience for families to gather around and share a meal and, share conversations and adventures about their day. So um, that's, that's special. All right, Zach, podcast books or both? So I would say a little bit of both. I'm less on the books, more on like the quick hitting articles, uh, but I'm really lately on podcasts because I'm driving around between locations. Yeah. And uh, one I'm really on right now is the journal um, by Wall Street Journal. Okay. And, um, you know, 15 to 25 minute segments. Um, they leave you with an, they don't draw a conclusion. They leave it open-ended for you to interpret it however, and it could be on a business topic. Lately, it's been a lot on COVID, and, uh, but it could be any walk of life, really. And that's a really fun one uh, that's also informative. Awesome, so the journal, the so journal. The journal, and it's, I, will, I listen to it on Spotify, but you can, I'm sure all the streaming ones have it, yeah. Great, great, great tip. All right, the last one's for both of you really about leadership the best leaders have what in common um i'll go first i think that uh, that a leader has a pretty textbook um definition but i would say that uh that it takes passion for what you do to be a great leader mm -hmm. and um uh, just putting off infectious energy like i spoke about earlier uh like russell wilson he's just always so positive and um puts off an energy that, that people want to, to uh, get behind you. Yeah. What about you, Zach? So I think a, a great leader has grit uh, and toughness, um, especially uh, during challenges. It was like the definition of a leader is just overcoming challenges, whatever it is, and, and putting out fires. And uh, somebody that's tough, somebody that's determined to step in there and figure out a solution to the problem, um, while making everybody around them calm, um, I think is a great uh, quality of a, of, a, of a leader. Yeah, that's, that's good, good nuggets and takeaways. Um, thank you guys for that. And those of you that have joined us uh, while we've been doing our rapid fire Q&A, I wanna say welcome. 
um, you are you were listening to a live interview. Uh, I have the privilege of interviewing Tucker Cranford and Zach Cranford with Cranford Hospitality, and you're now going to learn a little bit more about their business. So I encourage you to engage with us. If you um, use that those like hearts and wow faces, also throw a comment or two, and then you can share the video. That's even that's the best uh, way that more people can hear from this um, entrepreneurial duo. So let's dive in, um, help our viewers know. So everyone recognize, potentially you recognize what's behind uh, these, these guys that I'm interviewing, uh, but Cranford Hospitality. So what, tell us about the umbrella company and what businesses fall under that umbrella? You want this or you want that? Okay, cool. So yeah, Cranford Hospitality um, is a, a, a term that we started using recently because it would just be too long to answer when they said, what do you do? <laughs> uh, so we grew up in the, uh, in the family restaurant business. Uh, me and my brother both started at a young age. The original location was Granny's Country Kitchen. Uh, it's right off of I-40 in Eichard and uh, operated by my mother and father who's still involved in the day-to-day -day and still we do everything together. Um, we went off to college and came back with a entrepreneurial drive, I guess you could say, uh, to grow the, the family business. And uh, that location opened in 2002. Since then, uh, we have uh, expanded. Our, our next step was Granny's in Hickory, and um, which is right off the 127. And then from there, we opened Standard Oyster Company, um, which is a uh, fresh seafood, all bar seating, uh, something that Hickory didn't have at the time. Um, and uh, just tried to bring maybe like a big city feel to a small city with uh, unique um, options. Uh, and then in 20, that was 2016, I believe. In 2018, we opened up Granny's Country Kitchen in Claremont. That's our third Granny's location. And for those that's never been to Granny's, we're just down home country cooking, uh, breakfast all day, and uh, a, a real good place to get a quality meal at affordable price. Um, and then our most recent venture was 2019. We purchased the Charlotte Steakhouse uh, from, uh, the previous owners and uh, we just decided to revitalize it take what they have been doing forever uh, give it a nice remodel add some alcohol add some uh, wine program um, and add a few new menu items and uh, that's where we're in here at today um, and that's kind of what Cranford Hospitality is and uh, who we are in a nutshell I uh, I want to ask a follow-up question to this because I think it's really interesting the fact that you guys grew up here in this region. Uh, you saw your family owning and operating businesses. So you, you grew up and I'm, and I'm sure entrepreneurialism is, is innate in, in a lot of ways. Um, it, it runs through your veins. You went away to NC State yep. and you came back. Um, talk about that what was it that pulled you back to this community? And then to furthermore, what was it that, um, what was that moment when you realized like we can take these businesses and we can grow where we can start new concepts, but we can, we can take the family name and expand it um, and create something of our own. Well, I would say when you go to another town, you see, especially a town that's larger. And I would say, um, I want to use the term more advanced, but I'll use it kind of, I don't know. I don't necessarily mean that, but uh, what I mean by that is the options were different. You know, there was more diversity. There was more culture uh, in Raleigh. And you look at that and you say, man, Hickory can have that, you know, or our area can have that. And I think that's one of the biggest things is we had the ability and the knowledge from, from uh, being in it with our family to, to handle the day to day and understand what that's like, but also to see the the vision and see what the future looks like. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's. And Tucker, I don't know if you have anything you want to wanted to add. Well, it's, we um, we see opportunities, um, and we don't just throw ideas off the wall. We look at what is needed mm -hmm. um, in this area, rather than, hey, I, I want to do this. Uh, and then just throw it together. It's more, what what does this area need? What would what would get people excited? Yeah. Uh, 
that makes sense. It really yeah, helps. Good. Yeah, be it, being in a, a different area for several years, it helps you find gaps in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I thank you guys for, for thinking that. And, and you're right, we are a destination. We are becoming a culinary destination. If you think of all the locally owned restaurants across our community, and you guys have have been leaders in that. So I want to I want to say thank you for seeing. I always say leaders see beyond what presently what currently is. So leaders that are visionary, which I understand only one in five leaders is actually visionary. They can't they can see beyond the present. And so um, you guys are certainly visionary in that way. So think about. Um, you have all these concepts. You have, to me, it, it appears like a juggling act, right? You've got all of these balls in the air all at once. Um, varying concepts, right? Uh, different menus, different specialties, different experiences when you walk in the door. Talk about a little bit about um, how you how you juggle all that successfully um, while maintaining all the unique brands. Uh, but then carrying it out with just the two of you and, and other teammates. Uh, talk about that, a little bit more about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so sometimes I think we're crazy for it. <laughs> and I'm sure other people uh, think that as well. Um, but we, we try to develop different cultures at each uh, individual location so that um, they are comfortable in that environment. And we try to hire people that are, um, that are geared for that environment um, and uh, just do our best to, to maintain employees, especially with what we've got going on now at each location and, and, uh, and still hold our core values that, that go across the board uh, at all of our locations. And I would try to add in that we try to get the culture right from the beginning. I mean, at the end of the day, on the business side, we're buying a product, we're, we're creating it, turning it in something, and then we're serving it. So, I mean, those three things are always the same, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what. So that that's common within the businesses. But getting the culture right from the beginning, not having staff jumping between stores, they're at that store, they're dedicated, they believe in what we're doing, and they're seeing the vision that we're trying to relay, I think makes it easier on our end. Absolutely. And having, finding good leaders yeah. below yeah. us um, to, to yeah. help instill that as well. And I would say we've had, we've got a lot of excellent leaders that come to mind. A lot of folks have been with us for, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. Um, and I think that speaks volumes in, in them, you know, really believing in, in what they're doing, but also believe in what we're doing and we're, the direction we're going. Yeah, and uh, Tucker, you mentioned core values. Um, it sounds like you have some pretty solid core values that you communicate uh, with all of your team. So tell me a little bit more about your core values. So one of the main things is, uh, is uh, investing in our community because our community invests in us, um, our customers, uh, without customers, we don't have a business. Um, our community also goes into our employees as well. Uh, it's it's our community that that works for us, and um, we we really want to invest in our community and show uh, that that we care about them as well. Uh, that commu so community would be our first core value. Uh, what's another one of our core values? That, uh, providing a, a value. Um, so our value um, may be different uh, at, at different locations. At Granny's, obviously, our value would be um, a wholesome meal. A wholesome meal at a, at, at a yeah. not cheap price, but a fair price. Yeah. Uh, and we also try to, to instill that at uh, our higher end places, uh, Charlotte and Standard as well. Uh, but um, it's, those items are a little bit more costly, but we just, we still try to, to be fair. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I know people is probably in there as well. You've already mentioned investing, finding the right leaders and investing in those leaders. Absolutely. I think the community is the most important aspect because in our business, you know, some businesses you only have to deal with 
your staff or you only have to deal with, you know, every, there's every, there's all types of different businesses. Here we have the opportunity of capturing a community that um, is a part of our team, but also capturing a community that gets to enjoy what we do. And uh, it's really special when we get to connect those two and um, make a special place that, you know, just people are, are proud to come and enjoy. I mean, and think of what we already talked about, just the, the very picture of a family sharing a meal together and, and conversation or friends uh, meeting to celebrate various occasions. And I know you also have some, some fun stories that people have shared with you over the years. I mean, I have my own story about the Charlet. Uh, my husband and I went on our first date uh, at the Charlet, actually before I could even date him. And my, my in-laws, my future in-laws, now current in-laws, actually sat on the other side of the restaurant. Uh, so thinking about uh, other other stories like that that you've been able to share with the community, with your customers. Absolutely, so like the Charolais, I would say it, it's such a special place for so many people. We had so many special memories here. We're not like owners of the Charolais, we're more like stewards to it. Uh, yeah. And, and it on to the next generation. Like we had prom season this year and you know, we look around while they're sitting in here enjoying and we're like, how many people are going to come in here 10, 20, 30 years later and say, oh, man, I married the lady that I came to dinner with oh, or whatever, yeah. and, or, or I went to prom here. My wife and I actually went to prom here. <laughs> oh, that's so special. That's so special. Well, so I love it. Community, value, and uh, your people and your team. Uh, great, great core values. All right. Zach, you alluded to this earlier and talking about leaders have grit and they overcome obstacles and when they are faced with an obstacle they figure out uh, with calmness right figure out strategically how to get through it uh, the last year and a half arguably was most difficult for your industry hospitality was forced to close their doors and they were forced to shift their models uh, within a matter of hours uh, Zach you and I had many a conversations over the last year plus um, about how how we can advocate on behalf of, of your industry. So talk a little bit about COVID. How has it impacted, um, how did it impact number one, probably not so, in not so good ways. How did it impact you for the better, do you feel? And then, um, and really too, how do you feel, you know, what, what did the community, what did your chamber do to support you during this time? Yeah, absolutely. So you're talking about an, an industry that was turned upside down. I mean, you went from most places were having the best years that they had or best couple months that they'd ever had. And then you go to bam, you have to close the doors and you have to change your concept when your concepts purely driven on experience. How do you give that experience to somebody when they can't even come into the door? I mean, that's, that's a pretty big challenge that you're faced with. And um, it really forced us, and I'm sure everybody in the industry, to think outside the box. You know, since they can't now come inside the box, how do we broaden what we're doing? And um, it was a challenge. There's no doubt about it. You know, you go from serving thousands of meals a day to only serving hundreds of meals a day between all the places. Um, it, it posed challenges, but on the flip side of that, it made us better. Um, because, you know, when you're faced with a problem, you can tuck your tail and you can kind of turn around and make excuses or you can face it head on. And I think that's the route that we did. And that's a, a route a lot of folks did. Um, it made us better leaders. It made us better operators. Um, we had to be more creative in what we were doing. We had, you know, meals that you could take home, date nights, because most of the time, the Charlotte, for example, um, it's a date night. It's a special place. How do we create that date night without them physically coming here? So we had date night packages. Um, on, on Granny's side of the spectrum, we've switched uh, providers um, and we now have online ordering um, to make it a little more user friendly uh, and quicker. We, did, um, we didn't offer DoorDash or Grubhub pre-pandemic, but we do both of those now and uh, I'd say they're pretty successful. Yeah. Nice. Um, so it was a shift in processes and procedures. Um, but, you know, it'll make us better operators. I look at it, if we can get through COVID, then we can yeah. realistically about get through anything. That's right. Um, yeah. So, um, but also, um, 
you know, you start from a, a leadership perspective, we're all in the same boat. Everybody that's in the hospitality industry during that time. And we can either, you know, point figures or this and that, or we can get in the boat together and we can figure out how to, to row our way out of it. And that's what the chamber um, helped us do. Um, so we had some group discussions. Um, and in that, uh, we kind of came up with the open and safe campaign um, to, to gain trust and momentum um, back to the consumer because the consumer never doubted coming into a restaurant that was not safe. You know, that was just restaurants are safe. And then the CDC tells you in March of uh, a year and some ago that you can't go into a restaurant. It's the most unsafe thing ever. Uh, so we lost all their trust and we didn't do anything to lose it. You know, uh, it was just taken from us. Um, so we helped do that open and safe to talk about a commitment that we would make um, to have standard operations um, to, to really regain the trust of the, of the customers. Another thing is we talked about um, was how do we inspire others to join this industry? Yeah. You know, a lot of folks go to college or go to trades or this and that. And with that, um, the CVC see hospitality academy opened in i think it was july yeah. of this year and it's gonna um focus on you know giving leadership uh to the folks so a lot of times your best employee um gets the leadership role because they're the best at their job they're not necessarily the best um, at being a leader and so it'll help them really bring them into another put level. all the pieces together yeah well i uh I would say one of my the the greatest silver linings of the pandemic was watching the hospitality industry leaders like yourself and others that came like you said jump, jumped in the same boat and quite literally quite literally uh, we we did we we hopped on Zoom like this and we we started convening and sharing ideas and figuring out how you know what are you what are you doing for reopening what are some creative thing, ways you're doing to continue to serve your customers and then then you guys dropped the bomb and said let's think grander let's think beyond how can we create a talent pipeline how can we um pour into our existing leaders and help grow them and so um how admirable and then too with the open and safe campaign you know we had 150 plus businesses that jumped in with with the restaurant or the hospitality industry so not only did you say, okay, as a, as a restaurant now, we are open and safe community, it spilled over into retail. It spilled, it spilled over into manufacturing and professional services and medical offices. And so uh, that campaign truly was, uh, it created a ripple in our community, I think was a, was a game changer through the pandemic. So I want to say again, thank you guys for your leadership in that way. So uh, look to the future. Give me, you guys are visionary. Give me some vision casting. What does the future look like for Cranford Hospitality? There you. So I, I, I'm, I'm always grow, grow, grow. That's just me in, uh, inherently in nature. Um, so I think, you know, we've doubled revenue a couple of times. Um, and I like to use that metric um, because there's no clear vision. It's no, we're going to grow grannies or we're going to grow this or we're going to grow that. And uh, it's no, we're going to grow that. Sorry, we had some staff coming in. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, real it's, life. Yeah, real life. Yeah. But it's no um, clear path of where we're going. Um, we're going to seize the opportunities as they come to us. And our goal is to um, create sustainable ventures that um, our community and our staff are proud of. Um, we're working on several things at the moment. Um, so I can't go in any grander detail than that, but uh, I, I would say the future is bright uh, for our organization and the future is bright also for, for the Hickory Metro area. Absolutely. Tucker, you want to add anything? Uh, I think that kind of covers. Uh, and, and sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt uh, Tucker, but also talk about just vision casting for the Hickory Metro region as a destination. I know this is, these are aspirational visions that you've had. Uh, like you said, being in larger metros and seeing the things that they have available, seeing the diversity of experiences and cuisine that's offered. Uh, Zach, 
what are your thoughts around uh, the Hickory Metro as a hospitality for for um, hospital or, or destination for hospitality? Excuse me. Yeah, so I, I mean, I would say when I was in college, and you'd say, "Oh, you're from Hickory," you know, or, or you're out of town. Okay, well, what's Hickory, you know, or or what do you do there? Uh, in the past five to ten years, we saw so many excellent places um, that just it, it elevates everybody around you. The better, the more places we have, so it's exciting time on that end. Um, I would also say when we first started out and growing, we never heard guests say. You'd say, what are you doing here if you're from out of town? Oh, I'm on business or I'm passing through the area. Recently, in the past two or three years, we hear people say, oh, I'm here for the weekend. I'm going to bounce around and I'm going to do this. And we're like, you came to Hickory for the weekend? And we see it more times than not. Oh, yeah, we're going to see what all Hickory has to offer. It's like they're getting away. Um, and I would say it's a great place to get away. I may be biased. <laughs> No, I think you're 100% right. Uh, you guys, I want to say thank you for spending the time with me. Um, thank you for, for your vision and your, your commitment and your investment in this community. It is very evident that community is at the tip of the sphere of your core values. So you guys, um, what a pleasure it's been to, to, to interview you today, but also just to continue to work alongside of you on behalf of, of this community. Um, I want to thank our series sponsor again as we close Hickory Real Estate Group. Thank you for uh, making this possible. And um, also our Working for Business series. We're going to have one of these interviews every month. So it just gives me the privilege of highlighting great businesses and the leaders, the great leaders behind these businesses across um, our entire region. Our next episode is September the 8th. So join us for that one. We'll be on Facebook Live again around the same time period during the day. This interview will also be available on YouTube after the fact. So I thank you uh, for those of you that have hung in and watched this live. Uh, thank you to those that are hopping in and joining us on the replay after the fact. And then you can also see it on YouTube. Um, again, on behalf of your chamber, thank you so much for supporting local businesses. And I will see you on September the 8th.